So I was really mad at myself after that scenario, but I knew I couldn't stay in that place because I had to forgive myself for not knowing what I didn't know at the time. I did know and was familiar with the terms of the attachment styles, but I did not know how to apply that understanding to my life. So I can't be mad at myself for something that I didn't know. It's like being upset when you're an eighth grader for not knowing 12th grade math. You shouldn't know 12th grade math because you're in the eighth grade. Give yourself time to mature to 12th grade math and then you can know 12th grade math. But stop trying to speed up the process. Yo, party people, it's Ashley of SingleWomanChronicles.com. Where being single is a beautiful choice rather than a miserable circumstance. And today's episode is brought to you by How to X Your Ex, a guide to getting past unhealthy relationships. It's time to end the cycle, the agonizing cycle of unhealthy relationships. Most people struggle with breakups because they just don't know how to start start the healing process. How to X Your Ex is a step-by-step guide on moving past unhealthy relationships. Renew your strength and find happiness by walking away from relationships that no longer serve you. Start fresh by Xing your ex. Learn how to stop the overwhelming thoughts of your ex. Get rid of the feelings of regret and shame. Eliminate the crushing feelings of rejection. Be at peace with your decision and be hopeful that there's better out there for you. Get this book right now on Amazon.com as well as books on Google Play, Apple Books, Audible, and Barnes & Noble website. All right, today's topic, forgiving yourself for not knowing what you did not know. Listen, I feel like we all go through a point in life where we start to beat ourselves up because we should have known better. But the unfortunate part about life is experience is the best teacher. And you literally won't know until you know. Now, I did this video on TikTok that went pretty viral on forgiving yourself. So I'm going to insert that clip. Here's why you're not over it. Because you haven't forgiven yourself for allowing it to happen. For a long time, I thought that because I knew better, I would do better. But a lot of people don't talk about the fact that knowledge and application are two different things. Just because you know something doesn't mean you're going to immediately apply it because application takes discipline. You literally are super comfortable with with old ways of doing things. So in order to apply something, just because you have knowledge, it doesn't mean that you're going to do it just like that. It's going to take some work. So for a long time, I kept making mistakes even after I gained the wisdom. And that's okay. But it was hard for me to forgive myself for those mistakes because I did know better. But today, I'm letting you know. Forgive yourself. Release it. So as you heard in the video, a lot of people struggle with self-forgiveness. And it makes your healing process longer and harder because you don't. It's like you're struggling with forgiving yourself. And it's even worse when you're like, bro, but I did know better. Like, I learned that lesson. Like, why didn't I apply that lesson? So, like I stated in the video, knowledge and application, two different things. You can read a manual to something, read it, understand it, know it. But then once it comes to the application process, that looks very, very different. So I think it's just so many layers to understanding self-forgiveness. So I'm going to use my life today as an example. Um, I often talk about my dealings with anxious attachment. Um, Attachment style is basically how we connect in the world. So there are three types of attachments. Secure attachment, which is what most should aim for. Anxious attachment, which is like when you get anxiety from your attachments and also there's avoidant attachment and these are people who avoid emotional connections um and you can look them up psychology.com i mean psychology today is a really good resource to look those up but understanding your attachment style is very important because you understand how you one you understand why you do what you do 
and you can get better at actually moving and connecting with people. So I grew up with an anxious attachment style because my father walked out on me. My mother was emotionally unavailable. So I attach to people and I fear that they're going to leave. So I get anxiety around it and I try to create scenarios where they will never leave me. And that causes me to cling really tight or can cause you to self-sabotage situations so that you be the one that ends it instead of them. So that is what anxious attachment looks like. So I started going to therapy. Well, one, I started getting my degree in positive psychology. I have a master's in positive psychology, which is just the study of positive emotions as opposed to negative emotions. And when I started studying psychology, anyone who has studied it knows that once you start studying, you start to discover stuff about yourself. And so the self-work begins. But even after that, I actually ended up in therapy and we talked about it. So I thought I was okay. <laughs> like, I thought that I was cured of my anxious attachment. No, I wasn't. <laughs> so in about 2020, I went through a dating situation with a young guy, um, a young man, I can say young guy because he was younger than me, where um, I attached to him pretty quickly. We were seeing each other every single day. We were going out. It was really heavy. And then it ended abruptly because my anxious attachment um, caused me to kind of cling to him. I wouldn't even say it caused me to cling to him because I was going with the flow that I was given. <laughs> um, and he switched up because I later found out he has an avoidant attachment style, which means like when it, you get too close, he pulls away. So that was like a whole nother thing. But I ended up like spazzing out on him about something. And then after that, he was like, he no longer wanted to continue. And I was very upset with myself. Like I, I was so sad. I was so angry with myself. I just blamed myself for that scenario. I felt like I could have done better. I felt like I shouldn't have attached so quickly. I didn't understand why I had because I understand that I have anxious attachment. This is stupid. Like, why wouldn't this turn out better for me? This is dumb. I can't, this crap doesn't work. <laughs> like, so I'm going through all these emotions and then I have a therapy session. And at the time I had the most bomb therapist. She's still a therapist, but I don't, I know she took a maternity leave, but that's neither here nor there. But anyway, so <laughs> I go on the call with her and I'm just crying and, um, telling her what happened and I'm all sad and I'm anxious and whatever, whatever. And she looks me dead in my eyes and she said, cause I'm waiting. I'm going to tell you, I was waiting on her to read me for filth, to tell me how I should have done better, to tell me that, you know, I knew better. So I should do better and blah, 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 blah. It's not what she said. She looked me dead in my eyes and she said, why do you date assholes? That's not where I thought that was going. <laughs> Miss ma'am, did you hear what I said? She's like, yes, I heard everything that you said. Why do you date assholes? So we got into the therapy session and she basically broke down how my attachment is this. His is obviously this. I probably have a tendency to date this kind of person, et cetera, et cetera, on and on. So I was confused because I'm like, but I know I knew what an anxious attachment was. Why didn't I catch that? So she, although I had the knowledge I wasn't taught the application. So what she did was she gave me a book to help me with the application of what do you do when you are an anxiously attached person and how do you move to security? So she gave me the book that I mentioned several times attached and she gave me, well, I had already had the book safe people, but she told me about reading safe people. So in this book, what it taught me was as an anxiously attached person, the way I pace myself is very important. I can't be hanging out with somebody every single day. I can't be in their presence because it's going to cause me to attach to them, them really quickly. So I have to space that out. I can't be jumping and saying yes to every single thing. This Some people will be like, oh, isn't that playing games? It's not. It's actually self-preservation. Because when you first meet someone, you don't know their intentions. You don't know where this is going. You don't know how this is going to end. You don't know if this is going to end. But until you know, you need to move accordingly. So for me, I had to learn how to slow down, like Bobby Valentino said, and <laughs> just be more intentional about my movement because I understand that if you attach, if I attach too quickly, then I'm probably going to get the same end goal. 
I'm also probably not going to be dating emotionally available men because a lot of the times, unfortunately, I talk about emotionally unavailable guys all the time because I've dealt with that so many times. But unfortunately, the issue is when you're someone who tends to pace pretty quickly, you're looking for charm more than you're looking for authenticity. So a person can come into your life and they can be very charming and you're basing how you feel about them or how much you connect with them off of how they're treating you. You're only looking at what they're doing for you. You're not really paying attention to or reading in between the lines. Like, are they open? Are they telling me about things as are they telling me about things in regards to their feelings or are they just telling me stuff that I want to hear? Like you have to really be paying attention to a person's heart posture as opposed to their hand posture. Like not just what they're doing for you. You need to be really looking at, okay, how are they in their heart? How do they treat people? How do they think about stuff? Are they opening up to me or are they just saying surface stuff? You got to be paying attention to this type of stuff. I've learned all of this just from overcoming my anxious attachment, right? So I knew I had to pace myself so I can avoid dating these emotionally unavailable guys. Like I'm telling y'all, it was like really just, it was really, we talk about mental health a lot, but are you taking charge of your mental health journey? You already know I talk about going to therapy and how my therapist snatches my edges all the time. Asking me questions that I would have never thought to ask myself. Asking me questions that I've pondered on for years. <laughs> but I want that for you. I want growth for you. I want the best version of yourself because the only way to reach your goal, your potential, your destiny is to become the best version of yourself. And let that begin with therapy so let's start with talkspace talkspace has a promotion right now where you can get a hundred dollars off your first month all you need is the code space yes s-p-a-c-e space click the link in the description box to get talkspace right now today let's start 2023 off right we out here i already told y'all we out here so get it right now click the link wherever you're listening Spotify, Apple, it's in the description box, even YouTube. Get it right now, $100 off. Like, $100, that's a lot of money. Y'all better come get this. Come get this therapy. Come get this so therapy. I was really mad at myself after that scenario, but I knew I couldn't stay in that place because I had to forgive myself for not knowing what I didn't know at the time. I did know and was familiar with the terms of the attachment styles, but I did not know how to apply that understanding to my life so I can't be mad at myself for something that I didn't know it's like being upset when you're an eighth grader for not knowing 12th grade math you shouldn't know 12th grade math because you're in the eighth grade give yourself time to mature to 12th grade math and then you can know 12th grade math but stop trying to speed up the process I don't care how many books manuals you read certain things in life you don't know until you know I know for me, I don't speak on people who are have kids because guess what? I don't know because I ain't got kids. I don't speak on marriages because I don't know because I ain't married. I don't speak on engagements, home owning. I don't know because I ain't never been engaged and I ain't never owned a home. <laughs> so I know that those kinds of things you won't know until you know. So step one to like self-forgiveness and, and just really letting go is acknowledging that you didn't know at the time and that's okay. We live in a society that makes it seem like you're supposed to know everything. Like it feels embarrassing when you don't because everyone presents themselves as an expert. It is just so foolish. For example, this interview with Akon has just went viral. This man is on there. He's on Beyonce's internet. Telling folks, you don't need a woman to have a baby. Women are irrelevant. He literally says, like, women are unnecessary. If a man wanted to have a kid, all he needed to do was ejaculate into something, put it in an incubator, and a kid would be born. The last time I checked, an egg needs to be there. And who got the eggs? 
women. <laughs> but he just knew he was an expert. Just knew it. So when you have people running around Obama's internet like this, who thinks everyone is an expert, when you don't know something, they make you feel like it's not okay to know something. And that is false. It is okay not to know. Because people make it seem like ignorance is a bad thing. Being ignorant literally just means you don't know. If you were to ask me about chemical engineering, if that's a, even a thing, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm not a chem chemical engineer. So I'm ignorant at chemical engineering. There is nothing wrong with being ignorant of chemical engineering. Stop allowing people to make you feel dumb for things that you don't know. I'm so okay with myself that I ask a lot of questions because I'm okay with not knowing things. I feel like the most intelligent people are okay with not knowing things because they know in order to get to know things, all you got to do is ask. All you got to do is explore. All you got to do is research. But don't be mad when you don't know. It blocks so many things. So if you find yourself beating yourself over a scenario, not being able to let something go because maybe you blame yourself, maybe you should have known better, maybe you made that mistake before, it's okay. Just accept that although you felt like you had learned the lesson, there was something missing. Because when we've learned a lesson, we won't, most of the time, we won't fall into that again. Now, you still can because a lot of the times you can know but not care. <laughs> like a lot of the times, something can be your default. I'm trying to think of a good example. For example, say you... I always think diets because those are just really good analogies. Say, for example, you are trying to lose weight and you have lost 15 good pounds and you're having a week, you stressed out, you are tired, you don't want to eat right this week and you know that if you eat wrong, you're going to go down a spiral and it's going to be hard for you to pick your diet back up. But at this point, you don't even care. You don't care because you tired, you stressed out. <laughs> so you may end up defaulting and doing that old thing just because you're tired. So sometimes forgive yourself and understand that, hey, I made that mistake. I'm forgiving myself. I know I was just in a season in my life where I was just tired and exhausted. And that was my default. You know, our defaults are habit. They're habitual. So it's hard to break a bad habit. And even when you break a bad habit for a while, sometimes you may get tired and fall back into that. But don't be so hard on yourself. Give yourself grace. It's so hard to give ourselves grace because we live in a society where folks are so hard on everybody. But no, apply grace to yourself. Give yourself grace. You deserve it. You freaking deserve it. So yes, acknowledge that you, it's okay not to know. Give yourself grace. I don't know if I'm on A, B, C, one, two, three. I don't know. But also <laughs> understand that knowing doesn't require as much discipline as applying. When you're trying to apply new lessons to life, it's going to take a level of discipline because you're trying something new. You're doing something new, right? Um, in sports, for example. Say there is a player and this player is like at 80%. He's almost great, but there's 20% left. It's his jump shot. The way he shoots his jump shot is wrong. <clears throat> so we're trying to get him to the full 100%. But we have to adjust that way he shoots his jump shot. But there's a default in his brain because he's been shooting that jump shot for so long. It's going to be hard to get him to do the better thing because his default is that old jump shot. But we're trying to get him to do this new jump shot because the new jump shot going to take him to that 100%. Right? So he gets out there. He's on the court. He's playing in the game. And he's applying the new jump shot. And he's killing them out here. But then something happens. He fouls out. Something goes awry. He gets tired. Now he has to make a choice. Am I going to do the default thing and go with that old jump shot that I know doesn't serve me? Or am I going to apply pressure to myself and go with this new jump shot that is, although uncomfortable, 
although harder than the default, but I know it's going to give me the results that I want. You got to make a choice. Are you going to be old jump shot or new jump shot? So many times in life, I think we fall into back into our defaults because they're more comfortable. <laughs> but it takes discipline to know just like even me, you know, like my celibacy journey, like not having sex. Back in the day, my default was, I don't care. I'm still going to give me some. <laughs> like, I don't care. I'm going to still give me some. But like that wasn't doing anything to me. I was just having all these emotional connections and they weren't. I felt icky after having sex with these people. I felt like unworthy. I felt like, oh, my life got to be better than this. So I stopped. I just had to stop doing it. And eventually my default now, my new default is celibacy. Like my new default is, yeah, I don't have to, I don't need to do that. Cause sex means more to me. Like I don't need to do that. You know what I mean? So once you continue to apply discipline and learn new ways of doing things and applying new things because you've learned that those old ways don't work for you and you have to apply the new ways, your new ways will eventually eventually become your default. So once you have acknowledged that, listen, I didn't know at the time, it's cool. I'm being graceful with myself. I skip one. Two, you need to grieve. I think too many times we skip over the grieving process of self-forgiveness because sometimes it is our fault. Like sometimes we do make certain mistakes by making the wrong choice in that scenario. And even then it's okay, but it still doesn't take the pain away because maybe you lost an opportunity. Maybe you lost out on um, a relationship. Maybe you failed at something, something happened. So you have to grieve that, right? So make sure you grieve it. Be okay with it. Cry if you need to cry, vent to someone who you love, Go to therapy, journal, write, scream into a pillow. Go to one of those rooms where like you can break things. Yeah, do all of that because it's necessary to grieve. So once you've acknowledged that you didn't know, once you've grieved it, once you understand that you have to apply new ways of doing things in order not to make this mistake again and apply that discipline, rinse and repeat. (laughs) Like... After that, you just keep going and keep doing it until your new way of doing things becomes your new default. And it's possible. It is absolutely possible. Like, self-forgiveness is pretty tough (laughs) because, again, you want to tell yourself, like, you should have been better. You should Everybody make mistakes, even you. (laughs) Like... That's what you have to understand. Everyone makes mistakes, even you. So going through the process of grieving from that mistake, acknowledging that mistake, learning new ways so you won't make that mistake and rinsing and repeating to continue to live up to your best version of yourself. Exactly. And listen, even when you've arrived and I feel like I've overcome so many points in my life where I'm just like, Okay, we're, we're better at that. Okay, we're no longer doing that. Okay, we've grieved that. Okay, we've forgiven ourselves for, for that. I still have moments where those little voices want to tell me like, oh, you should have known better. Oh, it's your fault. But I just replace those. Or I'm real big on the ah, ah, You know, like <laughs> when you a little kid around you and they about to do something they not supposed to be doing, you be like, ah, ah. in my mind, I have a strong at at spirit. Like when my brain is trying to be negative and tell me you should have known better, blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. I'm a strong on the at at. We not de- doing that today. I didn't know what I didn't know when I didn't know it. And that's okay. We just going to grieve and move on and do better next time. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Also, I do want to say this because not enough people talk about this. Sometimes you can get... You can do everything right and still not receive the result that you hoped or projected that it would be. Like, you can literally follow the steps and apply everything and do the best thing and not receive the results. Because, unfortunately, that's life and all we control control is ourselves. There have been many situations that... I've healed from my anxious attachment. 
Um, I don't be wilding out. I don't be self-sabotaging. I used to be cussing niggas out. I don't do that no more. I don't do any of that no more, okay? But still, I do all the quote-unquote everything right. I'm chilling. I don't move too fast. And it still not work out sometimes because that person not ready, isn't ready. And guess what? That's okay. You could have done the job interview. You could have, you know, done the job right. You could have submitted the proposal. You could have been, you know, getting everything you were supposed to do. And then they come back and be like, oh, no, we decided to go with someone else. That's all right. Unfortunately, you're not going to get what you want in every scenario. But I like to think that rejection is God's redirection. So you just have to think the positive thing. What did you learn from this situation? What did you learn from this scenario? And how can you apply it in the future to be even better? Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't go into that pessimism because I've been there. I've been depressed. I've been in a mindset of like, oh, woe is me. Every Nothing ever goes right. That don't do nothing but make you sad and make you gain weight. I'm sorry. You're going to be emotionally eating. That's all I'm saying. So <laughs> just get up, look at the bright side and keep it pushing. Keep it going. But all right. Until next time, y'all. Bye.